Welcome, everyone. So glad you could make it. Uh, we're here to praise God and worship God together tonight. And we're going to uh, stand and sing the first and the fourth verse of O Come All Ye Faithful. Let's stand and sing together. seated. So Joseph also bring went it up just a little bit. So Joseph went up. Joseph, Joseph also went up to. It's not on. Okay, I'm sorry. Now it's on. Seven. Luke seven. Luke two one through seven. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem in the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in claws and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I was reading Christianity Today and I came across a uh, article by a pastor named Jeff Peabody. And uh, he has a church in Tacoma, Washington. And I kind of scratched my head, being a guy. Uh, I really didn't know much of what he was talking about, but uh, he pointed out to me, so I had to go back into the Bible and figure out uh, what uh, the Bible was really saying. And uh, it says in verse 7 that, and she gave birth to her firstborn a son. She wrapped him in cloths. And the original word, which uh, probably many of you memorized, was uh, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, 
Right. And did you know that the angel points that out as well? Which uh, I kind of knew that, but um, this will be a sign to you. You shall find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. So uh, I had to look that up and found out that uh, swaddling uh, and wrapping of a child was, uh, especially a newborn baby, was something that was done in the Middle East. Uh, some commentators say uh, for uh, 1,000 to 2,000 years before Jesus was born, and all through Asia, even in Japan, where they call it uh, furoshiki. And furoshiki also, uh, if uh, they bring presents to uh, their families, they wrap the presents in cloths and not paper. They think it would be very disrespectful if you would uh, wrap your presents in paper. So you better start over and rewrap all your presents and go home and rewrap them all uh, in uh, some sort of a cloth. But uh, the point of the article was, can you imagine the Lord of heaven and earth becoming a baby, first of all? He took on the form of a servant, Paul says, and... Uh, he truly did uh, limit himself. He allowed himself uh, to go from the throne room of heaven into uh, Mary's womb and then uh, born as a little baby. Can you imagine... Uh, the Lord of heaven being born as a little baby and then being wrapped uh, in swaddling clothes. Well, you know, uh, it's really uh, tough for a baby when they're all wrapped up and they're, uh, they, can't, uh, they can't move, Right? And so uh, this was the message throughout Jesus' life. He allowed himself to be uh, put in this situation of uh, being bound uh, after being the Lord of heaven, starting with the swaddling clothes, and then growing up in and with a family, Mary and Joseph, and then the brothers and sisters coming after him. And then when he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, then he was uh, tied and then beaten and continued until he was nailed to the cross. Then, amazing fact, when uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus uh, asked Pilate for the body of Jesus, they went back and they took down the body of Jesus. And do you remember what they did? They wrapped him in cloths, burial cloths. So from being wrapped in swaddling clothes to the day that he was, uh, that he died on the cross, and then they wrapped him in cloth again. But you, we know the, 
the truth, the truth is, as the women went to the tomb, and then Peter and John running to the tomb, they found something amazing. Jesus, who had died, and then on the third day, he burst all the bonds that had held him. How wonderful is that for all of us here today? It's so amazing that no matter what is holding you uh, in bondage, the sin or whatever it is, Jesus has come. He allowed human beings to bind him from the moment he was born, the day he died, wrapped up, and death could not hold him. He was totally alive. He tore through all the bonds. You and I have the privilege now, and when he comes back and gives us this new body, totally free from all the bondage of this life. Swaddling clothes. I never thought of it before. But how important that Dr. Luke includes not only what Mary did, but what the angels said. And this will be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. This is pure joy today. If you're struggling today with your health, and you can tell it on my voice, if you're struggling in whatever area of your life, look to Jesus. Jesus is the one who tore all the bonds away. On Easter morning, we, saw, we sing, he tore the bars away. But he tore all limitations. He tore all the things that were binding him. He tore everything so he could be, as he was, King of kings and Lord of lords. And that's the beauty of allowing uh, children to come and tell us the Christmas story again tonight. Maybe you'll learn uh, something uh, from the children, something, you know, you know the story so well, but then something hits you as uh, you think about it again, and then you have to go home and read the story for yourself. So I invite you, find out about swaddling clothes. You know, they uh, actually, I read about babies being, uh, sometimes they, uh, pour oils on them, especially olive oil and other things as well, and they rub their whole bodies with it, and then they tightly wrap them up, uh, and that is the first meaning of, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. I pray that you'll dig deeper and see that Jesus has uh, torn all the bonds apart 
for you, for me. Amen. Let's pray together. God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. He's uh, the one who allowed himself to be put in bondage right from the very beginning. He allowed his mother to wrap him in swaddling clothes and lay him in a manger, a feeding place where they would put the food for the animals. We're here today to hear the children tell the story about our Savior. Help us to listen with open ears and open hearts. And may they tell it from their hearts because he has broken all the bonds and given us joy today. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have the deacons come forward and collect our evening offering for benevolence, and that's for those uh, who need uh, help and assistance uh, from the church or uh, friends around them. So we'll ask the deacons to come forward. We're going to sing together, so we'll remain seated and sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. And while we're singing O Little Town of Bethlehem, the kids are going to go out into uh, the fellowship hall and the uh, teachers will be there waiting for you to help you get ready for the program. All right? Let's sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Welcome everyone to Bethlehem. Let us open our eyes and our ears and listen to the story of when Christ was born. Mary and Joseph, a pitiful sight, so tired and dirty, they gave me a fright. Sickly or dying, what was the matter? A room in an inn, impossible chatter. My rooms are all taken, not one empty bed. There will not a room at all Bethlehem, I said. But their eyes told a story of hunger and need. I couldn't avoid them, so I tried a good deed. I cleaned up the stable, Rachel cooked up a meal. We helped all we could, at least that's how I feel. For we noticed that Mary was expecting and soon. So we prepared for delivery right under the moon. The child came so quickly, his face seemed to light, as if God had shown his presence so vivid and bright. Joseph said softly, Jesus, my savior and friend. God sent him among us to bring to an end. Fear and hatred, darkness and sin. Instead, God gave light to let us love in.
My animals were calm, quieter than normal. They were often were noisy and never too formal. They always were eating or else they were sleeping. The stable would require continuous sweeping. But on Christmas night, they were strangely in awe at the sight of the babe and all that they saw. It's as if they were aware of God had just touched them, had fed and watered them, carefully brushed them. They knew, I believe, that God had been able to work a miracle there in that stable. We often don't see angels in flight, but on the first Christmas they lit up the night. They appeared to the shepherds, and oh, were they scared. Angels, cried one, will any lives be spared? Are they here to destroy us? Is their time on earth up? Have I seen our last day? Have we drunk our last cup? But peace on earth, goodwill to all, was the angel's sweet song. That was their call. With a light show that dazzled all who did see, the angels hallelujahed and sang with great glee. To Bethlehem, shepherds, the angels directed, to see Jesus the Christ, whom God has perfected. Go worship the Lord and follow his ways, and you will find Christmas joy for all your days.
The shepherds I told you were scared and stunned. Too much hot work or too much hot sun. That's what they thought, that's how they explained. Perplexed and afraid, they loudly complained. But the angel song calmed them, and then they believed. They rejoiced when they knew, and they were quite relieved. They went to the stable and worshipped the Lord. Then they left and began to spread the good word. The star that shone brightly led the wise men at night to Bethlehem's stable to the manger's strange light. They knelt down before him in worship and love, praising God for his wonders from heaven above. The wise, men's, the wise men were kings and were filled with great awe as they worshiped this child, the savior of all. These kings brought him treasures of spices and gold as they rejoiced and witnessed salvation unfold. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He says, come to God for he healing from strife. Come unto me, all you who la labor. I will give you rest forever to savor.
"'Twas the very first Christmas, and there in the manger, the Christ child was born. It couldn't have been stranger. Shepherds saw angels, wise men a star. They came to see Jesus. They came from afar. They knew he had was special, God's very own son. He came to earth to show love to everyone. He grew up in time, the Savior, our Lord, to be worshipped each day, to be loved and adored. So now at Christmas, we all take delight in the gift that God gave us, that first Christmas night. In the gifts we receive and the one that we give, let us never forget it's in Christmas that we live. We will now sing Joy to the World. Please stand and join on verse 2. deacons have prepared a treat. Uh, there's lots of candy bars and also two boxes of apples. So I hope that you'll stay and enjoy uh, some, uh, something to eat. And uh, thank you all for coming. It's a wonderful evening. And uh, let's uh, receive God's blessing as we uh, leave this place tonight knowing that the King of all kings gives us uh, this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>